there. My name is Amy, and I work at Lowe's. Stop by for our end of summer celebration with great savings all over the store. Get 15% off Energy Star appliances priced $397 or more. Or choose 18 month special financing on purchases of $299 or more when you use your Lowe's consumer credit card. Then head over to Paint, where you can save $10 on every $50 you spend on paint and paint supplies. Lowe's. Offers valid through 9511. Special financing cannot be combined with 5% off everyday credit offers. See store for details. Blog Talk Radio. Being with my producer, B, who is the star producer, the queen of producers in the entire world. Hi, B. How you doing? I am doing so well. And I have to tell you, uh, if, I, if I could take a moment to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And I read your blog the day, and I was blushing. Literally, I could feel myself blushing. <laughs> oh, my God. I never said a Thank you. <laughs> oh, no problem. It is such an honor to work with such a huge professional. B, you are, I really, you know, I have worked with a lot of producers in my time, and I'm going to say right now, you you are the best. Oh, my God. So, you are awesome. You know why that is? No, thanks. I've, I've been doing it for the least amount of time. So, <laughs> so I'm uh-huh. still into it. <laughs> Yeah, well, anyway, uh, today on the show, we're going to have the cast of The Five. Now, a lot of people confuse that with Fox News, but this is actually a series about five demigods that are descended of the original Greek gods who are cast, actually cursed by Hera, the original five who decided the gods had gotten out of control. Hercules and his buddies um, took their powers away. And so before Hera lost all her powers, she cursed those five to forever serve humanity, never find love, never find happiness. Well, she got a little enthusiastic and ended up cursing them and all their descendants. And so each time there are a bunch of the descendants, but there are always five who are the most powerful. And so the premise is it's modern day, and these five are at a school in Washington, a university, some in graduate school, some in undergraduate, that, that has all descendants of the Greek gods. But these five are the best. And they their whole job is to protect humanity from, from those who would destroy it. And it is a fabulous premise. I cannot wait. It's going to be a mid-season show. So tell me what you think about that, B. Does that sound as good to you as it does to me? It sounds awesome. And I was very excited. I can't wait. You know, I see... So many shows um, coming on now that are uh, sort of human degrading, shall I say? Look, all of these shows are all about blood sucking, you know, afterlife, the undead sort of things, and I think that this is fantastic. I think it's about time um, that we have a real show, and it also it sounds a little bit like what we're trying to do, saving humanity from. <laughs> yeah. Well, like the other thing that, Yeah. The the thing is that I really like is is that, you know, part of the curse was that they these characters, these these demigods were never allowed to find peace or happiness. And so the show is about them doing what what comes inherent in their souls cuz they are truly heroes from deep inside, but to also learn how to to be and deal with their circumstances of being half human, half God. So it, it's, it was such an interesting premise to me. From the second it was, I saw it, I was just like, oh, my gosh, this is really literally about living up to your full potential and, and uh, becoming at peace inside with you, in, with it, you know? It's the American dream. It is. It absolutely is, oddly enough. It, it's about, and, and, you know, really everything for me is, is, is what I'm going to do today going to turn that tide? Is it going to turn it around so that we can have morning in America again? Everything about mm-hmm. me is about that. You know, it's God, family, country, and every aspect of our lives. If we are in loving, good relationships, if we are good parents, good spouses, if we are good friends, if we are good strangers, then we're already doing our part, you know? Yes, yes. And, you know, and that it seems, I say it all the time, it seems so simple, 
that we can't manage to get our, our heads around it. Because if it's not a complex theory, if it's not, you know, it doesn't have 20 different aspects, then we have a tendency to think, oh, that's just too simple. That can't work. But what you just said is absolutely truth. That's the bottom line truth yeah. of it. It, you know, it really it's, is, and it's so simple. You know, the other day my husband and I drove through somewhere. I don't know where it was. We were a couple hours from home, and I was needing some food. More more importantly, I was needing a frozen strawberry lemonade. <laughs> and we pulled in, and the gal who helped us just had the most beautiful smile. She was busy and frazzled and hurrying and hot and, and all that, but she still smiled, you know, when she handed it, handed me my drink over and I said to her, I said, you have got the most beautiful smile. And you know her whole face lit up? It Aww. can, like, give her a, a boost. Yeah, something that simple. A compliment. You yeah. have a beautiful well, smile. You know? You know You know what, too, though, and if you think about it, it's, it's great that you pointed that out, but at the same time, do you remember when you used to could go into – um, a store, a uh, you know, grocery store, even and everybody smiled at you, and that doesn't happen anymore. It's because we feel like we have to have our lives in twenty different things. God made us for one purpose, each individual one of us, and if we take care of and tend to that one purpose, this world would be a much happier place that we get so frazzled trying to take on the world and, you know, and we, we tend to lose our smile. We lose our joy. And the Bible says don't let them steal your joy. Yeah, and, and that's true. And that can happen with a life that is out of, ba- out of balance. And, and I tell people all the time, you know, uh, for instance, Barack Obama says he's not going to rest until the economy's back on track. Then he goes on vacation. And I was like, no, we can have that work shift. But the, the funny thing is, <laughs> is and, and I'm not condoning his 75 golfing vacation things, okay? I'm not condoning that. But, but what I am saying is that in our own lives, if we spend all of our time working and doing nothing else, we will become so unbalanced that we'll become ill. We have to remember in the order, God, family, country, God, family, country, over and over and over and over, you know, Keep that order. Don't ever let it get out of balance. And you have to do what I call filling the well within. You have to be able to to garden. You have to be able to go to football games or basketball games, you know, whatever your thing is, as long mm-hmm. as it is not 100% unbalanced that way, but things that just fill the well within. And, and then you can go out with a renewed energy and just fight this battle for America like you it's just like there's no, you know, no tomorrow. But if all you do is fight that battle, you will fail. You yeah. have to be balanced. There's just no question. Well, and we have to also, I believe in celebration. You know, if you're going to, if you're going to work and work and work, there are rewards that we work for. So if you keep that balance, you know, reward yourself for doing a good job, then you can remember why you're doing a good job. So, and that's what I tell people all the time that are that tell me that I hear from people all the time telling me how they're exhausted from this battle. We don't, you know, it doesn't look like there's ever going to be daylight. It doesn't look like we're ever going to win this. Are we too far gone? I hear that all the time. Are we too far gone? And, you know, I tell them, if you were out enjoying what we're fighting for, you wouldn't have to ask that question. You need to get away from the computer. You know, that's true. You know, you need to get away from the computer. You need to stop looking at the bad, the negative that's being fed to you through, you know, the uh, all the different uh, publications. Because they're all about negative and they're all about sensationalism, and so walk away. Walk away, go out and take a look around. Go to a park and take a walk. Go to a beach and see the children. Go and listen to the laughter it's, and, and be part of it because if you lose your laughter, you have no energy left. I was watching, it was funny because <laughs> I was watching Monsters, Inc. with my son yesterday. And, you know, <laughs> how... great movie. <laughs> It's a great movie. We we have it and and we watch it all the time. 
that they started off going, okay, well, let's go after the screams. But then they found out that the laughter was twice the power of the screams. And I thought to myself at that moment, we have lost our laughter. America has oh, lost yeah. her laughter. And it, it's great, your, your guest today, it's going to be great to see the actual heroes, you know, people who are playing heroes. It's, you know, <laughs> we have lost that too. We have. We have. Our heroes, for some reason, have become athletes and actors and actresses who personally, um, and I'm not going to say this is a blanket statement because some are really, truly amazing, who personally don't care what people think and they live lives of excess to a degree that that to the children that hold them up to be their heroes start to yeah. mimic that. And, yeah, and it's so important to me that parents point out to children who the real heroes are and who the losers are. Like our military. I mean, you t- you take a you take a you were talking about you know football players and and athletes that sort of thing. You take a gift that God gave you, you hone it, and you make it the best it can be, and that is a beautiful thing. And then you charge the most amount of money. You exploit it to the hilt, and <laughs> and that does not make a hero. I'm sorry, it doesn't. No, you know, those athletes that spend their spare time working with uh, underprivileged children, with building homes for the poor, and there are those who do that, who spend their time um, just helping those in need, those are your real heroes. Those are your real just heroes. And those are even, there are everyday heroes. I worked for the Galveston Area Builders Association, and they have, uh, so many people don't know, that they have a uh, bunch, a bunch of the companies who come together and do the extreme makeover house building, and they, you know, they donate all of the building yeah. supplies. They donate all of the Tilson Homes is a huge uh, backer of the. They donate all of the work. We we donated all of the workforce for the last um, extreme makeover home building. And all of the supplies, and with a, it was, you know, it's one of those things that these guys, they take, you know, for the entire year they might build four homes. That's their entire year. But for the, because it's such an intricate project, but for this, they had to have people on staff building 24-7. And it, you know, they gave them yeah. a week and said, here, build us a home. And they gave of their time. They gave of their gas to get there, all the way from Galveston, all the way from San Antonio and Austin. And, and they, they did what they needed to do to make sure that this home was built in a timely fashion. They gave up. They sacrificed. Those are the real heroes. They did, and and I agree. There are heroes in every walk of life, and everywhere we, you know, everywhere we turn. There's there's just no question. And and I think for the whole point of the show today that I wanted to make sure people understood that if they are going after their dreams, because we're going to talk with these men about their dreams and and uh, when they decided to be actors, what they had to go through to get there. Because I do know their backstories, and it's quite amazing. These these are amazing young men. And But the point is, I want people to understand that if they're going after their dreams and they're fighting for them, powering over them, through them, or around every obstacle and never, ever giving up, if, if they walk away from today's show with the desire to go after their dreams, then they are turning the tide towards Morning in America again. All it takes is a citizenry engaged in going after the American dream and realizing it's possible because this is America that, you know, I I can't remember if I shared this last week, but my father, who was born in Amsterdam, and when he was four years old, Hitler's armies invaded, and and Holland fell within eight hours. That's all they lasted. But he used to, um, he was just a working maniac, absolutely insane. And then he retired, and within six months was so bored out of his mind, he decided to start a window washing business. So he bought a bucket, he bought some window soap, 
And he bought a squeegee and went to town. And he got clients, and within six months, he was making $6,000 a month because that's how my dad works. He's just a hardworking man and get the clients, and, and his work was so impeccable. Well, um, I'm from a farm, and my mom sells, you know, my mom and dad would go down to the Saturday morning market, uh, farmer's market, and sell uh, eggs and yogurt and cheese that my mother made, bread, you know, that kind of thing, or fruits and vegetables. And one day... A Dutch couple came through, and my dad was so excited, so he was talking to them in Dutch, and they asked him what he was doing. And so he explained that, you know, how he'd gotten bored and decided to have his own business, and, you know, he came on Saturday mornings to sell my mom's wares. And they looked at him with total shock, and they said, do you know that in Holland you can't do that? Once you reach a certain age, you are forbidden by the government to work. It's insane. What we have in America is so precious so critical to the salvation of the world. It is because we personally have the freedom to go after our dreams and to go after what we want to do, to do what we can to keep ourselves busy if busy is what we need. And and uh, that's, what, that's what pursuing that dream is all about. Because if you love what you do, I believe Boyd said this last week, Boyd Matheson, we interviewed him last week from Trillium Strategies, and if you haven't heard the show, you need to go back and listen to it because he did a fabulous job of of uh, branding the conservative message in such a way that it can take on the Democrat spin machine and win. But he said, if you're doing what you love, then it's not a job. And that's the key to find what you love. And sometimes you have to do what you don't love as much in order to pay the bills. And that means you find a way to do it after work. And that's what I have always done. And that's what these men have done. So it's just truly been amazing. 